Radiometric Dating Explained. Let's use the Crinum Coal Mine controversy to illustrate. This is a story about the Crinum Coal Mine, Radiometric Dating, and Young Earth Creationists, but mostly it's about thinking well. First, the viewpoint of this video, and what it will argue, is that the science is correct. Radiometric dating is a proven method, and young earth creationists commit critical thinking errors in their propaganda. I'm Michael Allen Prestwood, and this video is based on one of my weekly one-minute hot topics available at touchstonetruth.com. Let's quickly break it down. Young earth creationism. A young earth creationist wants to believe the Bible more literally than human observation allows. According to them, the earth was created circa 4004 BC. On day one, God first created the earth and light. On days two and three, God created the sky, land, sea, and vegetation. It was only on day four that God created the sun, moon, and stars. We now know even the order of these things is incorrect. To young earth creationists, saying things in school classrooms like farming really got going about 10,000 BCE is nonsensical. These young earth creationists want to believe, have to believe, radiometric dating is wrong. Critical thinking errors. To do this, they rely on critical thinking errors like the cherry picking and straw man fallacies. Radiometric Dating Explained Radiometric dating is a powerful tool for determining the age of rocks and minerals. It's based on the decay of radioactive isotopes, which are elements with unstable nuclei. In nature, elements typically have the same number of protons as neutrons. A hydrogen atom has one proton and one neutron. Carbon, the sixth element, has six protons and six neutrons, but it's the protons that determine what element it is, not the neutrons. Carbon-14 Example High-energy cosmic rays constantly bombard Earth's atmosphere, triggering a process called spallation. In geology, spallation is the splitting of rocks which can be the forces of nature or the literal splitting of rocks by a geologist. In physics, it's the fragmentation of atomic nuclei. When neutrons from cosmic rays collide with nitrogen in the atmosphere, they sometimes replace a proton with a neutron, transforming nitrogen into unstable carbon-14. This newly formed carbon-14 becomes part of the natural carbon cycle, creating a continuous planet-wide dusting of radioactive carbon. Here's an interesting side note. The dusting of Earth with carbon-14 has been happening for over 4 billion years. Although carbon-14 is radioactive and part of Earth's natural background radiation, its low energy emissions are readily absorbed, posing no significant risk. While concentrations of this background radiation are a source of cancer, in general, the effect of radioactive carbon-14 on life is minimal. But perhaps this radioactive dusting played a minor role in the early formation of micro-self-replicating molecules around 4 billion years ago. Scientists are still piecing together the details, but natural processes like this were almost certainly a part of the recipe in the early evolution of first life. Okay, back to it. By measuring the decay of carbon-14 in once-living materials, we can accurately date ancient objects back about 50,000 years. Let's quickly go over the details. The sixth element is carbon with six protons and six neutrons, but it can have extra neutrons and even transform into nitrogen. Here's your first takeaway. Sometimes cosmic rays knock a proton out of nitrogen in the atmosphere. The neutron from the cosmic ray replaces the proton. This instantly transforms nitrogen into carbon-14, which then slowly and naturally transforms back into nitrogen, and we can use that process to measure time. So carbon-14 has two extra neutrons, 
six protons and eight neutrons. That's unstable and radioactive because one of the extra neutrons gradually changes into a proton over time. Naturally occurring radioactive carbon-14 is present everywhere on Earth. Since plants absorb it through photosynthesis, finding concentrations of carbon-14 in rocks indicates organic material, likely from ancient plants that once lived. That means a rock of unstable carbon-14 gradually turns into stable nitrogen with seven protons and seven neutrons. And we can reliably predict that half of the carbon-14 in any sample will turn into nitrogen in 5,730 years, and 75% of it will turn into nitrogen in 11,460 years. As a side note, carbon-13 has one extra neutron but is stable, just like carbon-12. Although carbon-13 only makes up about 1% of the carbon on Earth, that 1% does not transform into a different element. It just stays carbon-13 until an external event changes that. Carbon-15 is a thing too, but it's not natural. Nuclear testing produces carbon-15, but don't worry, it's short-lived. It has a half-life of just 2.5 seconds. It quickly transforms into nitrogen-15, a stable and harmless nitrogen isotope with an extra neutron. Now, Let's examine the errors in thinking about the Crinum coal mine. Cherry picking fallacy. The cherry picking fallacy occurs when someone selectively presents evidence that supports their claim while ignoring a broader body of data that contradicts it. In this case, young earth proponents focus on an anomaly on the trace carbon-14 in coal samples and ignore the overwhelming evidence confirming the coal's Permian age of 275 million years ago. This age was determined using multiple dating methods, including uranium lid and potassium argon dating, which all align with each other. Trace amounts of carbon-14 dating to around 50,000 years ago doesn't mean the coal itself is that age. Think about it. That extra data indicates that another organic event occurred sometime around that time. Something like groundwater infiltration or microbial activity. That relatively recent event introduced modern carbon into the sample. It's not documenting the age of the coal, it's documenting a much more recent event, which is fascinating in its own right. Strawman Fallacy Next, the straw man fallacy happens when an argument misrepresents a position to make it easier to attack. By pointing to minor anomalies in radiometric dating, specifically around carbon-14, critics argue that all radiometric dating is unreliable, but this misrepresents how science works. Radiometric dating involves multiple independent methods such as uranium, potassium, argon, and rubidium, strontium dating. Other methods such as stratigraphy and paleomagnetism help us order ages. And we have other methods for determining age, including extremely accurate tree ring dating, which accurately documents every year back to about 14,000 years ago in some regions. All these methods are used together to cross-verify results. No geologist relies on carbon-14 to date coal that is hundreds of millions of years old. So using this as a counter-argument against geological dating is a classic strawman. Your second takeaway. The Crinum coal mine controversy teaches us an important lesson. Critical thinking requires looking at the full body of evidence, not just selectively chosen data points. How we determine order and age is both varied and creative. Independent methods include stratigraphy, ice cores, cosmogenic nuclide dating, and paleomagnetism. These diverse techniques spanning atomic decay, geological layering, and climate records consistently align, reinforcing a well-established scientific consensus. Radiometric dating, along with about two dozen other dating techniques, confirms the Earth's age as approximately 4.5 billion years. This content was inspired by 30 philosophers. 
for a deep dive into how logical fallacies like these fit within the 5,000-year story of human thought. See Chapter 9, Aristotle and Empiricism. I hope you enjoyed this video from my Touchstone Truth channel. Please like and subscribe. For more on philosophy, science, critical thinking, and history, visit touchstonetruth.com.